get ready to learn how to paint faux metal in order to make beautiful farmhouse decor using Dollar Tree products. It's simple, easy, and affordable. And of course, as always, DIY treats. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Hi guys, it's Anika and welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. So a little while ago, I did some Kirkland's dupes where I made these metal canisters and I used Dollar Tree items and a painting technique to make these plastic canisters look like aged metal. And I absolutely fell in love with the process. I knew from the moment I saw the final product that I would be painting lots of things this way. So I'm at it again and I have some DIYs for you that I am honestly in love with. They were so fun. I love how they came out and I really hope you enjoy them. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. Everybody hit that bell so you'll be notified when my next video comes out. And when the DIYs are over, head down to the comments, let me know which DIY was your favorite and give this video a big thumbs up. Okay guys, it's time to craft. So I'm gonna start out with these pet scoops that I got from Dollar Tree and we're gonna use this metal painting technique to make them look like aged farmhouse metal feed scoops. So I'm going to start out using this magic eraser that I have. You could also use a makeup sponge and I'm just going to peel off some of the corners to make it more of a rounded and organic shape. Next, I'm going to use a light gray and I'm using this um, Waverly chalk paint and elephant to do this layer. And I'm just gonna dab my makeup sponge or my magic eraser all over whatever it is that I'm painting. Now for the back, I did have to use a sponge paintbrush just to get in those crevices, but you're not gonna see that in the final product. So it's okay if it does not look perfect. As you can see, there's some of the color peeking through, but that is okay. So after this first layer of gray, we're going to need a darker gray. So I don't have a darker gray on hand, so I'm just gonna add a little black to the elephant color that I was already using. Folk Art also has a metallic paint line that has a color called gunmetal gray, which is a nice dark gray that you could use at this stage as well. So we're going to use our sponge once again and we're just going to dab all over whatever it is that we're trying to make look like metal. Now I'm using the sponge so that you don't see paintbrush strokes but instead you see all these little speckles of color going throughout and that's what's going to create that texture to make it look like metal. So this is where it really starts looking like metal. I'm going to use a metallic color and this is the Folk Art Metallic Sterling Silver color. And once again, I'm just gonna dab it all over whatever I'm painting. And when this dries, it's an amazing transformation. It's going to look just like aged metal. I absolutely think it's amazing how real this looks. Now, because I'm going for the farmhouse theme, I'm going to age this up a little. I'm gonna use a little brown and a little burgundy. You could use red as well. And I'm just gonna make a rust color and use the dry brushing technique to just speckle some rust all over my scoop. So all dry brushing means is I'm going to get a little bit of paint on my brush. I'm gonna brush most of that off onto a paper towel. And then I'm going to lightly just dab that all over my scoop. And that's it. And a few easy steps, we have our faux metal paint completely finished. This really does look amazing, guys, and you can use it on a variety of different items to make different decor. So what I want to do with this pet scoop is to put some candles into it. So I'm gonna make a little riser using these tumbling tower blocks that I got from Dollar Tree. Now this was the box that had some of the blocks that were already painted brown and some that were the natural wood color. If you can only find the natural color you could easily stain these a darker color or use the natural wood that would be really pretty as well. So I'm going to take five of my tumbling tower pieces and just glue them together, try to make them as straight as I can. And I realized that I needed a little piece in the back to make better contact with the pet scoop. So I went ahead and glued that on after a few failed attempts of putting this in. 
So I'm just gonna put a few dabs of hot glue onto the parts that will touch the scoop and I'm gonna hold it even until it dries. I did add a little bit of extra hot glue right onto the parts where it connected. I wanted to make sure it was nice and secure. Now guys, I wouldn't recommend using real candles with this just because this is plastic even though it looks like metal. And so the candles that I'm putting on there will not be very heavy and I really think that this hot glue will hold and it has. I've had this up for a while and it hasn't been a problem. So next I just want to decorate my candle holder a little bit. So I'm just gonna grab uh, some ribbon and make a cute little bow. And I'm going to glue that onto my pet scoop. Now guys, when you're gluing anything onto this, with the pet scoop or the project that we're gonna do next, make sure that you put your glue exactly where you want it. If you try to pull the ribbon off or anything else, all your paint is going to come with it. So you really need to be sure of where you want to stick things before you glue them on. I'm gonna add some greenery right under my little stand. And that's it. This is finished. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. And I just put my faux candles right on top and I have this beautiful wall sconce. So I'm going to use my other scoop to make another really cute idea for some wall decor that will match that farmhouse style. I just grabbed a little scrap of ribbon that I had. I love this burlap with the lace. I think it's really pretty, but this would also look really cute with some ribbon with some buffalo check on it or really any burlap, anything you'd like. So I'm just going to make a little pleat in the middle of my ribbon and that's just so that it will go around this rounded piece a little more easily. I went ahead and glued that in and then I just followed the edge of my scoop around with the glue and I'm gonna glue my ribbon in there nice and flat. I did need to cut off some extra on each side just to make sure that it looked nice, but it was really easy to get in there. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Now guys, if you're not sure of how your ribbon is going to lay, you might want to try once or twice just putting it into place before placing your glue. Because once again, if you glue it and you're not happy with it and you try to take it off, all of your paint is gonna come right along with the ribbon just because of the type of plastic that we painted onto. And it's that easy. I think it's super adorable, but I just wanted to add a little bit of ribbon to make it match the other sconce that we made. So once again, I just snipped off a little piece of ribbon and this time I added a little bit of twine. Couldn't help myself, I love this stuff. So I just tied my bow and I did a loose tie and then before it was completely tightened, I just put a little bit of twine right into the hole. And this is just a little detail that I'm sure no one will notice, but I will. I think it's cute, so I wanted to add that. Once I have that completed, I'm ready to just add a little bit of greenery inside. And it's just another cute idea for some farmhouse decor. And this really only cost me a dollar, not including paint and glue, because I had all the rest of the scraps already at my house. So for the next DIY, we are going to use these beach toys, a shovel and a rake, and we're gonna use the same technique to make them look real. So I'm just gonna remove the screws and disassemble the handles and the shovels. And that way I'll be able to paint the shovel and the handle and also this long part in the middle. So I'm gonna start by painting that with some white chalk paint. And this is gonna give me a base that I can use to make this look like wood. So in order to make faux wood, I'm gonna use this Waverly Antiquing Wax. And using a lint free cloth, I'm going to go up and down along the handle. And this is going to make a wood grained effect. You can do as many layers as you want to get as dark of a color as you like. So now for the rest of the toy, we're gonna to use the same process to make this look like metal. So I'm gonna use my lighter gray in an elephant color, my darker gray, and then my sterling silver metallic gray. 
and I'm gonna add a little bit of rust as well. Now you're gonna wanna let your handle dry for at least 24 hours. You want it to be completely dry before you put it back together. But once everything is dry, we can just push it back together. And you guys, this looks amazing. It looks so real. I can't believe that this was red and yellow and blue. So next, I knew I wanted to add a sign to this. I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to make it look like, so I took the little knob off. I left the hanging element on. I did end up taking that off later once I figured out what I wanted to make. But at this point, I wasn't sure. So I took the paper off of the front, which was really easy to do. It did end up being that I could have just painted the back, but that's okay, this was easy. I took the paper off, sanded it down, and then I used some white chalk paint to paint right over the whole sign. So next, I found an image that I liked that I thought I wanted to decoupage onto my sign. I just found this by googling farmhouse home sweet home animals, I believe. Another one that I like is farm sweet farm. Any of those will give you some really cute graphics that you can use on your projects. So I placed it down on my little plaque, but I did not like the way the color of the picture was different than the color of my paint. So I decided to do a pencil transfer instead. I flipped over my picture, colored the whole back with a pencil, and then I placed it back onto my plaque and I taped it down. This is gonna be a way for me to get this image onto my plaque without having to see the paper and it'll look like it's just painted right on there. Next, I'm gonna use a pen and I'm just gonna trace every element that I want to be on my sign. So for example, if you didn't want those hearts on there, you could just skip tracing them and they would not show up on your transfer. Once I take my paper off, I have the entire graphic on my sign and I can use my Sharpie paint pens to just trace along everything and I have this beautiful painted graphic on my plaque. This is a really amazing way to get graphics if you do not have a vinyl cutter and if you have no artistic talent like me to draw or really even do letters that look nice. I have the standard size Sharpie paint pen and the fine tip one which really helped with this because this had some smaller, thinner elements and it was really easy to trace everything. Next, I'm just going to use some of this dark gray color that I had already mixed up to make my faux metal. Of course you could use brown or black or anything like that. And I'm just going to use that same dry brushing technique to just age this up a little bit, make it look a little more rustic and worn. So now we're ready to put everything together to make our farmhouse decor. So I just flipped the rake and the shovel over because I wanted them to stay together and I wanted them to be a little more stable. I lined them up to where I wanted them to be when they were hanging together and I just used this craft stick that I had left over from another project and glued it on the back. Once I flipped it over, I was ready to put my plaque onto my shovel. So I just kind of figured out where I wanted it and about now is when I decided that I did not want to hang it or put any ribbon in it. So I just filled that hole with some hot glue and then painted right over it and it disappeared into the sign. So now that that's done, I'm ready to hot glue my plaque onto my rake and shovel. I glued some ribbon onto the back of the handles and I'm just going to be able to use this if I want to hang it. For now, I just have it leaning on a shelf. And this is a bundle of greenery that I had from a recent project that I really thought was cute. So I borrowed it to put it onto this one. And I just really think it makes everything come together with the greenery and I just find it to be beautiful.
I cannot believe the transformation that those toy rake and shovels went through. They look real and I had so much fun making them. I really hope you liked them. That was definitely my favorite DIY. Head down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite. So for today's treat, I have this dip that we use a lot in my family. It's sort of like a fruity dip, but you can add more sugar and make it more desserty. It's just really versatile, really great for summer days to just have out, let people dip off of it with whatever they want. And I wanted to share the recipe with you, so I really hope you enjoy it. Okay guys, it's time to eat. So for this quick and easy dip, we're gonna start out with some cream cheese. I use the whip stuff. You can use a regular block, just make sure it is room temperature when you use it. And you may need a mixer if you're gonna use a block of cream cheese. Then I'm going to add some powdered sugar and some cinnamon. Now this is a really good dip to make a little less sweet by using just a little powdered sugar, or you could double it and make it more sweet for a desserty flavor. Once that's completely mixed and smooth, I'm gonna set it aside. And now in a separate bowl, I'm going to add some butter, some sugar, and I'm going to use pumpkin pie spice. You could also use more cinnamon, and you could substitute brown sugar for the white sugar. That's a really delicious flavor as well. Now I'm just gonna mix this until everything is completely dissolved and combined. And then I'm going to take my sauce and I'm gonna mix it into my cream cheese mixture. Now once this butter hits the cool cream cheese, it makes these little chunks of deliciousness. So we like to refer to this as our cinnamon roll cheesecake dip. It's so yummy, it's so versatile, and it will be gone before you know it. I hope you enjoyed the DIYs that I had for you today. Don't forget to head down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And I'll see you next time when we repeat it all again.